friends it's again time for interesting history of eye surgeries now today i'll be talking about uh, how the refractive surgery you know uh, the very popular eye surgery or lasers uh, which are done to uh, remove spectacles or vision correcting correction surgeries uh, what is the journey uh, in last uh, about 150 years so it all uh, started with uh, dr shiots yes the same doctor who invented the uh, tonometer to measure the uh, intraocular pressure same doctor first thought about uh, uh, some refractive uh, procedure to correct glasses but it was uh, in theory only he could not uh, materialize into any surgical procedure then uh, in between after that for about 50 years there was uh, not much progress then in 1930s dr sato from japan he uh, started uh, doing experiments on uh, radial cuts on the cornea which can lead to uh, improvement in myopia but again uh, this could not be applied clinically and it remains only a theoretical process then uh, for another 30 years uh, there was a gap uh, and uh, nothing much happened in field of uh, refractive surgeries although in the background uh, people were thinking of different procedures then it was barakar in 1963 who thought of a procedure that uh, if we can remove a part of the cornea and then freeze it and then sculpt it manually and then put it back uh, in the eye that could uh, uh, you know correct uh, myopia injuries on uh, this procedure but then it didn't gain uh, much popularity uh, at many places and uh, it was a, a low volume surgery and was not appreciated uh, throughout the world then a landmark uh, thing happened and that happened in 1973 in russia and that was uh, by an accident it was just an uh, accident that uh, uh, dr fedrov in russia he uh, was attending to a patient uh, who had corneal injuries and it so happened uh, that uh, patient uh, informed him that uh, after the injury he could see without his glasses on examination it was found that this patient was a myope and during injury his cornea was radially cut at various places and this led to flattening of the cornea in the center so this gave the brilliant idea of radial keratotomy to dr fedrov and then dr fedrov started doing experiments on first on animal eyes and then on human eyes radial keratotomy became very popular in 70s 80s and 90s for 20 years uh, millions of operations were done and uh, i had the great opportunity of uh, having my training for radial keratotomy in 1991 under the able mentorship of dr akira mamose in kiryu japan he was uh, a great follower of uh, dr sato and dr fedrov and then it so happened uh, that with the uh, advent of radial keratotomy the procedure became very popular and uh, it was done with the help of a diamond knife and it was more precise uh, with the passage of time and we could achieve really very very uh, great results in myopia but it was not applicable on hypermetropia so it could not correct uh, plus number uh, glasses the main disadvantage which we realized after two decades of doing rk was that some of the patients started uh, getting plus number in their eyes so earlier they were myopes we had corrected there 
number and after two decades say about 20 22 years uh, the flattening of the cornea kept on happening and uh, they started having uh, plus number uh, glasses meanwhile in uh, uh, 90s 1990s uh, there were development uh, of uh, other uh, procedures and uh, they, these were uh, happening because of the advent of excimer laser with excimer laser the first procedure that came was prk photo refractive keratectomy in this procedure the top layer of the cornea was peeled off the epithelium and then laser was done to flatten the cornea in the center and then patient was bandaged or patch was put and within 72 hours the end of epithelium layer would grow back and number is number was corrected but in this case there were also certain limitations initially there were pain for first three days and then uh, there were corneal haze cases uh, whenever higher number were corrected and then in late 1990s uh, the prk uh, was replaced with lasik laser in situ keratomyelosis here uh, we make a flap of the cornea um, which contains epithelium as well as part of stroma say about 100 to 160 micron thick uh, flap and then the uh, remaining stroma is ablated with excimer laser and then the flap was put back and flap would uh, stick automatically within five minutes and uh, there was no pain no need for patching and visual recovery was fast so now there there have been uh, many many modifications uh, with the new softwares uh, coming the basic procedure remains lasik and then there is smile technology then there is high definition hd technology but the basic procedure is the same and now the accuracy of this procedure is quite high since uh, lasik could uh, correct only up to minus six uh, numbers uh, so there was a need for a procedure which can correct more numbers because there were people with high myopia with up to say minus 20 numbers then it was thought that uh, why don't we put a lens inside eye over and above the lens which is naturally uh, there in our eye so this is this procedure is called implantable collamer lens or icl in this procedure whatever number we want to correct that number lens we put inside the eye over and above the natural lens of our eye and this can correct up to minus 18 diopters of uh, number so now we can correct high myopia uh, cases also uh, with ease and uh, this is quite successful uh, procedure for high myopia so friends uh, in the end i would say the whole purpose of uh, making this video was to tell you about the uh, history of refractive surgery and especially that incident when you know uh, a patient had an injury and his vision improved so that was the uh, landmark uh, in refractive surgery where an eye surgeon got dr fidroff got an idea that if there are uh, radial cuts are put uh, on the cornea then it will flatten the central cornea and this led to <coughs> a number of uh, procedures for uh, refractive surgeries later on so viewers will be coming up with uh, interesting episodes where the medical science was uh, helped uh, due to certain incidents or accidents and uh, new procedures were found thank you very much for listening to this talk bye bye